Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a crime, drama, thriller film from 2016, titled At the End of the Tunnel. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Joaquin is a paraplegic computer engineer that lives alone in his old big house that keeps the haunting memories of the wife and daughter he lost in the car accident that took his ability to walk. His only company is his elderly dog, Casimiro, who hasn't been able to walk in a while. When Joaquin calls the vet to ask about the results of his tests, he's told there isn't anything they can do about it. So Joaquin searches the internet for painless ways to put down a dog, buys the corresponding narcotic, injects it inside some biscuits, and puts them away in a jar for when the time comes. One afternoon, a woman named Berta and her young daughter Betty, who can speak but won't, show up at his door, asking about the room he's renting on the terrace. They saw the ad and came without calling first, which bothers Joaquin a lot. Betty tries to pet Casimiro, who growls at her, as Joaquin warns her not to do it because he doesn't like strangers. He only gets more annoyed when Berta decides to move in right now, but since he needs the money because the house will be confiscated soon, he doesn't complain much. Joaquin is very antisocial, so he doesn't like it when Berta tries to spend time with him on the first floor and even tries to help him by cleaning and tidying up. But Berta doesn't give up, she keeps trying to talk to him and know him better, even if he won't answer her questions. She shares a bit about herself, telling him she's a properly trained dancer that came to the big city looking for success but ended up dancing against poles. When she asks him why he won't sell the house to pay his debts, he refuses to answer, but it's quite obvious that it holds important memories to him. Berta also plays music too loudly, and Betty has the habit of hiding in random spots around the house, but no matter how annoying they can be at times, both of them start growing on Joaquin, especially when they make him a special birthday dinner. Betty also manages to befriend Casimiro, who not only stops growling at her, he even stands up and moves towards the kid, allowing her to hug him. Witnessing this makes Joaquin cry, although he waits until he's alone to do so. Joaquin spends a lot of time in the basement, where he works with computers. One day, he starts hearing weird noises coming from the neighbor's house, so he puts a stethoscope on the wall to hear them better. It appears there is a group of men on the other side who are paying attention to his movements and noises too, and they even know he's in a wheelchair. They decide they will come back later when nobody can hear them, so Joaquin tapes the stethoscope to the wall and connects it to his computer so everything they say will be recorded while he goes upstairs to have dinner with the girls. The following morning, Joaquin listens to the recording and takes note of the names he hears, but he can't quite understand what they are doing down there except for the fact they're moving some pieces of wood around. Needing some context, he makes a small hole on the wall with a screwdriver and inserts a tiny camera that also connects to his computer, and covers it with an old PC cabinet. Afterward, he tries to kick Berta and Betty out for their safety but doesn't tell them why, and Berta gets quite angry because they've signed a contract. She accuses him of being afraid of letting other people close to him and trusting them, so she gives him until the next morning to change his mind. The following day, Joaquin tells them they can stay. When he goes back to the basement, he begins watching the recording and taking notes. The men seem to only work at night, and they're digging some kind of hole that should be done for Christmas Eve, there's also some talk about an explosive. The most shocking discovery however, is to see Berta arrive as well. She crossed to the other side through the roof so he couldn't see her, and not only she knows these men, she's in a relationship with their leader, Gail too. She's rented the room on purpose to keep an eye on him, and Gail too scolds her for having crossed over since she could have been discovered. After giving her a special key, he sends her away and reminds her to only speak to him through texts. Later that night, Betty comes to Joaquin's room in her underwear to watch him sleep for a few seconds before leaving. Joaquin continues to watch the recordings and when he sees the men examining a blueprint, he finally understands what they're doing, they're digging a tunnel to rob the bank at the end of the block. While Berta is away at the market, Joaquin tries to befriend Betty by taking interest in her drawings, but she ignores him. However, he does discover something important, Betty talks to Casimiro, so Joaquin hides a microphone behind his collar. Joaquin learns that the men's plan is to put the money on a little cart on wheels that they'll push and pull along the tunnel. While discussing this option, Gaylor too discovers one of his men Minyeko, has been texting inside the house and sent someone the bank address. This makes Gaylor too angry, so while one of the thugs goes in search of Minyeko, Gaylor too scolds Zerta, his Spaniard accomplice, for having brought such a useless idiot into the plan. Minyeko is brought to the basement and punched twice before they tie him to the table, where he begins crying and explaining he just wanted to see a girl he likes while he was on his break but he hasn't told her anything. This isn't enough for Gaotu, who scolds him for putting the operation at risk before stabbing him with a screwdriver and hitting his head with a hammer. Joaquin watches all this with a phone in his hand, wondering if he should call the police or not, but he doesn't dare. Gaotu's brother, Canario, wonders what they should do with the body, and Gaotu tells him the corrupt cop that is helping them with this plan will take care of it. Later, after recovering the microphone from Casimiro's collar, Joaquin puts a sedative in Berta's wine and ties her to his bed, 
Then he takes her phone and sets up an alarm for when he needs to sedate her again. Afterward, he keeps watching the recordings, where he learns that the thieves have received information from the cop they're working with. They've been told that they mustn't touch safe 747 and 748 because they belong to very important dealers. A new person also arrives with the explosive they'll use to enter the bank, it's a woman, Renee, who will have to take over Mineko's place. When Berta wakes up, Joaquin feeds her and asks her why she's going out with such a douche, but Berta says he isn't a bad guy, he may be a thief but he won't hurt anybody. To get her to cooperate, Joaquin brings his laptop and shows her what they did to Mineko. While she watches how horrible her boyfriend truly is, Joaquin goes to see Betty and after teaching her she mustn't be scared of him, he allows her to take his daughter's old room and take Casimiro with her. Then, Joaquin begins working on a plan to take some money from the thieves. He thinks he can dig a hole on his floor right above their tunnel and simply lean in and take some money from their little cart when it's passing by. When he tells Berta about this idea while massaging her limbs, Berta tells him he'll get caught and killed, but he trusts his idea and puts her to sleep again after stealing her necklace where she keeps the key Gail or two gave her. Joaquin goes back to watching the thieves work and hears them curse when they find a water pipe in the tunnel, which means they've been digging in the wrong direction. They can fix it, but it'll take them one more day, so they'll get there on actual Christmas instead of Christmas Eve, which isn't ideal because fireworks in Argentina are usually thrown on the night of the 24th, but hopefully people will still be busy celebrating to notice anything. The real bad news for Joaquin is the fact they changed the little cart for a cat carrier because it is bigger, sturdier, and if it is knocked over things won't fall off it, which means he won't be able to rob it as it passes because it's not open on the top like the little cart. There's no other choice, Joaquin changes his plans. He finishes opening the hole on the floor and he goes down to cover the lid he made for it with dirt and seal it properly so it isn't noticed. He also examines the pipe and takes its measurements, making sure water is still running through it. However, when he tries to go back, he sees Gale too and Canario coming down the tunnel, so he hurries to hide in the abandoned area while hearing them talk about a safe house only the two of them and Zerta know about. Canario isn't very happy about Zerta knowing too because he doesn't trust him, especially after what happened with Manieko. After the two men leave, Joaquin returns to the house just in time to sedate Berta again, but Betty is nowhere to be seen. After finding Casimiro alone, Joaquin realizes what has happened, Betty has gone down the hole. Joaquin checks the camera and sees his suspicion is true, she is in the other house snooping around. At that moment, the men return to the basement, but luckily Betty knows she needs to hide. While Zerta looks for his watch, which he is sure he left there and now he can't find, one more person joins them, it's Gutman, the corrupt cop that is helping them with this operation. He's brought them a list of all the safes that must be avoided because they're connected to the alarms, and he promises to send police cars to patrol anywhere but that neighborhood. In exchange, Gale too must recover the papers from safe 155, which someone is using to blackmail Gutman. After they leave, Betty runs back into the house, and Joaquin helps her climb back up, discovering she's the one that took Zerta's watch. Afterward, Joaquin notices that Gailertu is calling Berta instead of texting her, and he needs her to pick it up so he doesn't get suspicious. Since she still refuses to cooperate, Joaquin brings his computer again and after pointing out Betty stopped talking two years ago which is also when she met Gailertu, he plays the recording from Casimiro's collar, where Betty is telling him how Gailertu touched her in secret. Joaquin tells her he has a plan to ruin his operation by filling his tunnel with water, and Berta, who is incredibly upset about his daughter, finally accepts to help. When the phone rings again, she picks it up and tells Gail or two that everything is fine and Joaquin almost never goes down the basement these days. After she hangs up, Joaquin sedates her again. During Christmas Eve, Joaquin and Betty watch the fireworks together while the thieves install the explosive. They'll be taking a break and go in at 8 am, so after locking Betty up in her room, Joaquin takes advantage of that break to go down there and move the explosive to put it on the water pipe. Next, he goes to the end of the tunnel and opens a hole that takes him to the bank, where he picks the lock of one of the forbidden saves, 748, and takes some money in a bag before leaving, not noticing he hasn't closed the safe all the way. On his way back, he sees Rene checking out the tunnel. He thinks he can hide the same way he did last time, but they're about to activate the fan that will clear the air in the tunnel, so he must rush back into the bank not to get asphyxiated. After that is over, luckily for Joaquin, their preparations take long enough for him to go back down and return to his house in time before they notice him. They detonate the explosive and the water starts leaking off the pipe, but they can't tell because they find the hole Joaquin dug and think the explosion made it. Rene enters the bank with two of Gailertu's workers, Pitchy and Schwarzenegger, and all three of them quickly start emptying the saves according to the numbers Gutman had assigned them. They discover 748 has been opened already, but they don't have time to think about it because at that moment they discover the water is starting to fill the tunnel. Gale or two, Canario, and Zerta, see this as well but instead of helping, they grab the money they already have and run away. 
Pitchy and Schwarzenegger try to escape as well but the tunnel is already half full, so they go back into the bank and open one of the connected safes to activate the alarm so the police can find them before they drown. But Renee, who has tried to cross the tunnel as soon as she saw the water, doesn't make it to the other side in time and gets stuck in the middle. Hearing her cries for help, Joaquin opens the hole and tries to help her, but as soon as she sees him, she starts yelling and warning the others about the neighbor as she tries to pull him down with her, so Joaquin lets go of her and closes the hole again, leaving her to drown. The pipe finishes breaking and water soon starts flooding the bank in Joaquin's basement. He takes off the whole lid and washes the dirt off so it doesn't look suspicious, then he pulls a rope he had prepared earlier to make a bunch of old computer cabinets fall on top of it as he leaves the basement with his bag of money. As power goes out on the whole block, he checks on Berta, who attacks him and pins him to the bed, demanding to know why he didn't trust her. Joaquin kisses her and tells her he has the money, so the three of them could escape together, but Berta doesn't accept this. She grabs the syringe to try to sedate him, so Joaquin has no other choice but hit her to knock her out. After injecting her the sedative, he washes the dirt off his body and goes outside to talk to the police, pretending to be an innocent neighbor that is worried about the water in his basement, and he's told to wait inside. Gutman is nearby overseeing all this and he calls Gil too to know what happened, but he doesn't understand either. Gutman hangs up on him when he hears they couldn't retrieve his papers. Moments later, Gutman takes a group of cops with him to search Joaquin's house, and he allows them in, still pretending to be an innocent citizen that only wants the system to do something about all the flood damage. He had already let Betty out and made her stay with Berta in his room so he could pretend they are his wife and daughter. The basement floor has sunk, so the cops can't find the hole he dug there and they accept there's nothing weird in his house. Gaylor too keeps trying to call Berta's phone, which is in Joaquin's hand and is ignored, but when Gutman is on his way out of the house, he takes the phone thinking it's Joaquin's and saves his number, asking him to give him a call if he remembers anything that could help the investigation. Just a few moments later, Gaylor too, together with Zerda and Canario, come to the house too, pretending to be cops. Not wanting to raise suspicion, Joaquin allows them inside as he sends Gutman a text asking him to come over. At the same time, Gutman is calling Gaylor too to yell at him for having opened safe 748, but Gaylor too hangs up on him without a care before interrogating Joaquin. He tells him all he knows is that his basement got flooded when some thieves tried to rob the bank and that he lives alone because the woman that was renting his room left yesterday, but at that moment, Betty comes out of the room, blowing his story. Gaylor too takes out his gun and after checking on Berta, who is still sedated, he picks up Betty and tries to interrogate Joaquin again. He still plays innocent and makes up more lies that end up contradicting each other, so Gale too pushes him off his chair and onto the floor. Canario starts hitting him and kicking him, trying to get him to confess, and he's only saved by Berta's phone suddenly ringing. Gale or two finds it and picks up the call only to discover it's Gutman, telling who he thinks it's Joaquin that he's at the door. Freaking out at this turn of events, Gale or two lets Gutman inside and demands to know why he has Berta's number as Canario ties him up. Gutman doesn't know what's going either, so Gale or two gets ready to shoot Joaquin, and that finally makes him talk. What he says however, is another lie, but one more convincing this time, he asks Serta to help him, pretending to know him. Using all the information he heard while spying on them, he tells Gaylor too that Zerta would come to his house by crossing the roofs to beat up and sedate Berta. He was the one that told Joaquin about the robbery and told him to open a hole on the floor to take some money that they would later divide among the three of them. Zerta calls him a liar, so to prove his made-up story, Joaquin mentions the safe house only Gaylor too, Zerta and Canario knew about, and tells them to open a nearby cupboard, where they find Zerta's watch, which Joaquin claims he forgot there. Finding himself cornered, Zerta shoots Canario, who also shoots in return and they both kill each other at the same time. While Gale or two cries over the body of his brother, Berta wakes up and grabs a dropped gun, which she uses to kill Gale or two for what he did to her daughter. Gutman escapes the flimsy rope they had tied him with and offers his help. He puts the bodies in the trunk of his car and gives Joaquin some tips on how to clean the blood off the floor before asking him for the money he stole. Joaquin refuses to give it to him and shows him he has a recording of him working with the thieves, which could get him in trouble. Gutman laughs at this and while he grabs and eats Casimiro's biscuits from the jar thinking they're normal cookies, he threatens Berta with his own gun. Joaquin has no other choice but to let him go with the money. While he's driving away, Casimiro's narcotics begin taking effect and Gutman gets dizzy, which causes him to crash his car and start a fire, so he decides to just lay down on the ground and wait for death or the police to take him. Many days later, Joaquin's house has been cleaned and emptied, and he's ready to leave it behind to start a new life with Berta, Betty, and Casimiro. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.